Mom's Toys, a uh, rare time where I'm in front of the camera. And it's because today I am reviewing this massive thing. <laughs> uh, this is called the Power Morphin Megazord. Basically, it is from the uh, Power Rangers Play School Heroes line, and this is the largest item that they have. It is a kind of weird take on <laughs> the Wild Force Megazord. Um, but it's supposed to be like a massive playset and it has like a transformation where it has a robot mode and then it has a lion mode Which again not something the normal Wild Force Megazord could do but should be fun. Hopefully um, Originally, I was not going to pick this up just because it's so big and it's just kind of one of those like where the heck am I gonna put it situations um, But Amazon had it on sale for I think like $26 down from 60 So I couldn't say no that was just too crazy cheap of a price uh, I was most excited for the little Wild Force Red Ranger that you get in there because I have uh, most of the other Wild Force Rangers from the rest of the line. He's a little underwhelming. We'll get there in a little bit. Um, the other thing is that this thing has lights and sounds. I'm surprised it hasn't gone off yet because just about every other time I move it or jostle it at all, it starts making crazy sounds and stuff. So we'll see how it goes. Oops, that moves. Okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so here's the packaging. You can see it's very open packaging. Uh, there's all that on the side over here. It shows up some of the features. You can see you can sit in the hand. That hand open chomps. You have like a jail cell going on down there. This side has a very large Wild Force Red Ranger, which is pretty cool. I like that artwork. Um, nothing going on in the bottom. Not really much going on in the top. And then on the back, you actually have to turn it like this. <laughs> there you go. It's making sounds on me now. Um, so it shows how it has the robot mode and then the lion mode, and then this shows off all of the features. So. Like I said, goes off random times. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna do my best to review this thing. Like I said, with it being so big, I'll see what I can do. But I'm gonna go ahead and get. This is gonna be a thing this whole time. Hopefully it has like a demo mode and a regular mode that I can turn it on and off. I'll see how it goes. I'm gonna get this guy out of the box and we'll take a closer look. All right then. All right, so here he is out of the packaging. Still pretty massive. Uh, unfortunately, there is no on or off switch for those sounds. So they're probably just gonna be going off the whole review. There's not really anything I can do about it. Um, we'll start off with the face. It's not bad, you know, fun little happy face. I like the green paint, silver paint. All looks pretty nice. With the uh, lion head on the inside there, I guess technically you never have to have it in if you don't want to. Like obviously it makes the most sense for it to come out for the lion mode, but if you want, because the Wild Force Megazord did have the lion head on the front so you could just leave it out all the time if you want and if that's the case it leaves like a pretty significant hollow area inside so if you wanted to have like figures hang out in there you could I mean there's nothing stopping you from doing that um, there is a battery compartment in there let me put this back in It's just constantly going to be making noise. I could take the batteries out, I guess. There's a battery compartment right here. The batteries obviously come included already. Um, otherwise, there's not really any articulation to speak of. The arms are solid. They do not swing or move. They only, the whole thing goes up as part of the line transformation. Uh, when it comes to the, like, arms slash hands, you can rotate them. Again, that's for the transformation, but, like, this button makes these chomp but if you put it like all the way down like you would think it would normally be then this just kind of hangs dejectedly back here it doesn't really it doesn't work as well in that position so you almost kind of want to leave this one up all the time it doesn't really make sense to put it the other way kind of the same for the shark head um, this is like the lowest part that the back of the mouth can hang so if you put it all the way down it can't even do anything like this does nothing but if you put this up then the mouth hang open 
and you can do the chomp. Um, so there's that. The hands are not that exciting. They both just kind of chomp. But again, you have to keep his hands like at that weird angle all the time to get it to work, which seems a little weird to me, but whatever. Um, this one doesn't have anywhere for like a ranger to sit inside, but this one does. So this is the uh, red ranger that comes with it. I'm just going to use him to show all the features and we'll take a closer look at them later on. But uh, you can sit him or any of the ranger toys really inside here like that. I'm trying to think is he no that's about as far down as it goes but yeah so you can someone can ride inside there um both of these little panels here open for some reason it gets stuck on that but so this can fold down it's just an open space there's nothing back here um there is like a decent amount of space for a character to sit inside there and I'll show you around from the back. You can see there's a decent amount of space, but there's a whole lot of space. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so it's just an open area. Someone can stand on this if you want. Uh, very similar thing going over here on this side. This one's actually a little bit cooler though. I'm gonna see if I can angle the camera down. This might make it a little bit easier. Um, but you can push this down and as you do that, this piece extends out. And so that's, I guess, like a cockpit. But the cool thing about it is, you can see it better from this side, um, there is a tiny little foot indentation right here. And it's got a little clip so that you can slide one of his toes under there. And then that way he will clip in place. You can see that there, which you probably can't, but I apologize. So that clips his foot in place, so that way when this whole thing slides out, he's not really going to fall. If you wanted someone else to sit on top of here, you could do that as well. So, and then you can just close that back up. Um, down here for the feet. Here, I'm going to move the camera a bit. Alright, so here are the front two feet. Uh, they both open up. This one opens like this. And just kind of reveals a ramp. Uh, I swear on the packaging it showed me that there was a sticker here. Almost like this would be like a little control center. Like he could kind of stand there and, you know, beep, boop, beep, boop. But it, I didn't see anything. I checked the packaging for instructions or sticker sheets or anything like that. And I saw nothing. So not really sure what's going on with that. But if you have one of the uh, little motorcycles. Again, these don't really go with Wild Force. But... It doesn't even really work that great. I feel like it's too steep of a ramp. So I don't know how this is supposed to work. Yeah, it's not really that great of a ramp. I feel like it's it would be okay if it was just like a natural incline. But because it like weirdly goes up like that, it kind of works. Maybe if I put a figure on it, it would add a little bit of weight. How did Ethan get on this? Alright, well that's not going to happen. Um, does it work with one of the no okay so anyway there's a motorcycle comes down the ramp there you go that one kind of worked so that's what the one leg does not really that exciting uh this one is a jail cell you can tell it's got the bars kind of molded in here which is kind of neat and then you can open it up and let the prisoner escape but the other thing i think is cool is there's actually like a little uh like trap door it really doesn't <laughs> it doesn't work amazingly but it's neat that they included it um let me see if I spin this around this way. So you can see that there's more space back here. So if you put a character on the trap door, and then you can kind of pull it out, and then they'll fall down into the jail cell, and then they're trapped. So I think that's kind of cool. I guess you're supposed to load the, the bike from here, I guess, maybe like that, so that it's in like a stationary position. And then when you come around to the front, and you open it up, and yeah, see, it still just kind of falls out. <laughs> it's just too, it's a weird angle for the ramp. But I see what they're going for. Uh, and then if you want to let the prisoner out, you open it up like this. Or you can leave him in there, whatever you prefer. So I like the jail cell. I think that's kind of cool. I feel like every play school slash Imagine X play set has to have a jail cell of some kind. I feel like it's written in a law somewhere because it's just the truth. Every single Imagine X play set slash play school play set has a jail cell of some kind. Um, that's kind of it for features in the robot mode you have 
the chopping of the two hands which we've already seen also here's the the bull head painted onto a scratch in black i guess it's a separate molded plastic but so you have the two feet that open you have the two chopping hands you have the lights and sounds in the chest and then you have the two shoulders that open that's kind of it um but now we'll take a look at the lion transformation okay so now checking out the lion transformation uh, basically what you're going to do make sure these are up all the way for the hands you're going to grab onto this bar right here and you're just going to lift this straight up just like that pretty much as far as that will go and then the legs together as one will move up and you'll hear them click into place so then you just kind of bring it down and boom there he is so this and then you want to uh, turn this so that the lion head comes out. But uh, yeah, that's him. It's okay. Um, he's got a ton of empty space. All that underneath there is empty space, which is a little weird. Um, I'm going to rotate the camera down a little bit. So in this mode, this thing's kind of incredibly difficult to get in the shot all at once. But uh, this is it. This is basically the lion mode. It's not the most impressive thing. Like I said, there's a lot of empty space underneath. Um, you can bring some figures around and you can sit one right here in the head. There's a nice big empty space for you to sit a ranger in there. Um, the other thing I learned just now, uh, when you press on these, I guess you should press both. I'll try to hold this up a little bit so you can see it a little better, but let me angle this a little differently. There we go. So you press on the ears, makes the eyes light up, the mouth opens and closes. It's accidentally falling back in on me. So I think that's neat. You know, that's where most of the sounds are all coming from the head. It's nice to actually cause the sounds to happen on purpose for once instead of just jostling the thing around. Um, but in any case, in this mode, you pretty much have the same features. I spoke too soon. Now it's making sounds on its own again. Um, you know, these things can still flip down if you want them to. You can still open these up if you want. You know, it's a little bit more difficult, but you can if you would like. Um, and like I said, since this is all kind of open, if you wanted to just put a bunch of figures in here, you could do that. There's nothing stopping you. Uh, the other thing is if you wanted to store characters in here still, you could store them in here. You could even store the bike in here if you want. So it's kind of nice, at least in this mode, it could carry a bunch of figures. I guess uh, you could put someone back in the, the cockpit up here if you wanted as well you can load him in there so that way it looks like he's driving in this mode it's kind of fun so I do appreciate that at least it can hold a bunch of figures inside but all in all it, it doesn't do a ton and you kind of have to make sure that you make you have to make sure that the head is all the way down because otherwise that means this is starting to swing back but yeah, it's just kind of a giant thing. It's it's a big piece of plastic. I feel like that's what it has going for it. I feel like that's why the price tag is so high. Oh, I forgot to show off the missile firing action. It does come with a missile. You just pop that in here. Press the little button on top. It fires out. There you go. <laughs> um, this thing is completely tied to just moving the head around. So it has to be at that weird angle if you want the head fully out. Uh, these do nothing now that the heads are all the way down and if you still wanted to have another figure ride in here you could do that so I have the the blue wild force ranger I'll put him in there since it's his zord so yeah I mean like I said in this mode it does look like a lion I'll give him that kinda uh, and it can hold a lot of figures you could easily uh, hold all the wild force rangers although they never made white so that's kind of a bummer but they do have yellow and black and silver. 
so you could put all of them in here if you wish but uh yeah that's just that's kind of it for this guy in this mode so before we close i wanted to take a look at the red ranger that comes with this i'm a little disappointed that it's uh like closer to one of the like blind bag figures as opposed to one of the ones that has the lightning bolt on his hand um so for this literally his arms can move around and that's it he has no head articulation his legs don't move at all he's painted decently um but i was just really bummed i felt like for as big as this place that was there's no reason they couldn't have given us one of the better figures i'm assuming it's because you don't need magnets to activate any of the features on the toy so that's why they they gave us the cheaper version he does come with a gun which I think is pretty cool. If you remember Wild Force at all, he had the like claw pincer weapon that could turn into this gun. I think it was smart to go with the gun as opposed to the pincer weapon, just because you know the pincer weapon would be hard to make as an accessory unless you permanently molded it onto his hand, like they did for a Dino Charge. Um, so I'm glad they gave him the gun. I'm glad you can take it, you know, in and out of his hand. So he's kind of like a weird hybrid between the blind bag figures and the full on articulated figures. So, he's weird in that way, but he I think he looks good. I mean, sure, he could always use more paint. I would love it if the, you know, iron, the iron's lies, the lion's eyes were painted. The fangs on the, on the helmet I wish were painted, and I wish the crest here on his uh, chest was painted. Other than that, I think he looks fine. You know, the gloves look good. All the gold paint applications look good. And just to show you what I mean, here is uh, silver. He does have that uh, bracelet. He's also got shoulders that can do this. And then he's got the bend at the waist. And his head can move from side to side. Now he doesn't have... Like he has the eyes painted. But he doesn't have the fangs. And I could live without the fangs. I kind of just wish the eyes were painted. He doesn't even have this painted though either. Although I guess it's because it would be the same color as his chest. Uh, here is Black. Who was also in this style. You can see he's got the chest painted. And then he's got the eyes painted nice silver around the visor. So, and he's also got shoulders that can go out to the side. So I wish this guy was kind of on caliber with these. But if he couldn't be, at least if he had just the one or two more paint applications, I feel like, you know, would have been a happy compromise. But he's not terrible. Um, let me just bring in the rest of them. They still haven't made white, which is a bummer. Um, so you can see these are, are figures that were from the blind bags. So they have, again, arm articulation and that's it. So if I compare this guy to this, he's probably got about the same amount of paint applications. But he doesn't have his weapon molded into his hand. This guy barely even has the... Does he even have the crest? No, he doesn't even have the crest molded onto him. So there's that. There's that. I think this one does. Yeah. Kinda? It's not really great. Yeah, I think that's supposed to be the crest, but it's really not good. But she doesn't have the belt buckle painted. So, kind of inconsistent when it comes to these paint applications but it's kind of cool we can go ahead and see if we can get like a team group shot going on here something like this maybe i could actually put it all on camera that'd be cool and then maybe put white over here something like that if they ever make her which they probably won't honestly i don't know how well these sold and i'm going to be honest i really think it was hasbro's fault because their distribution was weird so I don't know if we're going to get any more of these, but uh, I'll talk to that a little bit more when I'm wrapping stuff up. But here at least is a group shot of the Wild Force Rangers. Pretty much all of them. We're only missing one, but still pretty cool. I was glad to get Red to add to the team, even though he's not as articulated and painted as I would like him to be. So at the end of the day, do you need this guy? Probably not. I mean, it's the only way to get the Red Ranger for Wild Force. Um, unfortunately, he's not one of the better articulated figures, but he's still a decent figure. Uh, he does come with a weapon accessory, which is nice, and it's not permanently molded into his hands like a lot of the other blind bag figures, so I appreciate that at least. Um, still bummed that we never got white, and as I was saying a little bit earlier, 
I don't think we're going to get any more of these. I'd love to be proven wrong, but I feel like if we don't hear something about these at Toy Fair in the next month or so, um, they're probably done. Because Hasbro as a whole is, like, these were kind of made in the style of the Play School heroes like Star Wars and Marvel, which they've kind of moved away from. They had a lot more time with the Marvel and Star Wars ones, and they kind of did all the characters, and now they're transitioning to a new size class, which is pretty much like a 4-inch size. Um, they're honestly pretty big. And I feel like it wouldn't surprise me if they either A, try to move Power Rangers into that, or just drop the Play School Heroes Power Rangers altogether, because they did this first wave, and I don't think it's sold very well. But I'll be honest, I feel like it's their fault. Because the distribution was really weird. Pretty much everything that I got, I found on Amazon. That was where I always saw things first. It was the only place I could really find anything for the longest time. Um, I've really never seen anything at a Walmart. Towards the end, I started to see this guy at Walmart once or twice. And he basically came in and was immediately marked down to 50 from 60. Um... And that's the only Power Ranger thing I ever saw. And I saw that at like one or two Walmarts. At Target, they had just that $12.99 size class with just those three different ones. The Wolf um, and then the Dino Thunder, uh, I guess Demetrodon and T-Rex. So that's all I ever saw at Target. Target's whole like Play School Imagine X section is ridiculously truncated at this point. Um, it's mostly, that aisle is mostly Paw Patrol at this point And a little bit of that Ryan's World, which I can't stand. And then um, Imagine X is very small. Play School is like that. So I don't know if Hasbro is getting out of the game or they're just moving on to something else. But it really seems like I'm surprised we even got these because they're already on the way out from Play School Heroes stuff. So at least we got the one wave. I really enjoyed most of everything that we got. My only complaint was ever that the blind bag figures didn't need to be made cheaper. I think you could have charged an extra 50 cents or a dollar a bag and just made all of the figures the same level of quality. And I would have been much happier with that. I mean, for kids, like I think kids will like this, but I wouldn't be surprised if they get bored with it pretty quickly because it doesn't do a whole heck of a lot. If you have the whole line and you can pose your figures all over it and you can have a little play set with it, and I think that'll be fun for them and transforming it back and forth. Um, but it's very big. It takes up a lot of space, even in, if you try to put it in the... I think it takes up more space in the lion mode, to be quite honest. At least vertically, you can kind of put it against a wall or something, and it's not out in the way of your room. But uh, the lights and sounds are, are decent, but it goes off all the time without provocation, and that's a bit annoying. I wish there was an on and off switch. It would have been very simple to just have an on and off switch so you could just turn it off so you can handle it without all the sounds. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, the lights and sounds are kind of the big feature for this. Otherwise, you have the one missile launcher, the two shoulder things that you can pose figures on, and then the two chomping hands, and then the two toes of the feet open. And that's really it. Like, when I think back to the Imagine X Megazord, it was very similar, but it had, like, the opening chest. It had, I think it had a disc launcher. I think it had, um, I think the feet were actually kind of similar. It, it didn't transform so yeah, I don't know. Maybe they were about the same. I don't know. Here, let me put it to you this way. I'm glad I didn't pay the full 60. If you can find it on Amazon for 25, 27, whatever it was, I think it's worth that. Because if you think about it, you're paying about as much as like, a, you know, a Black Series Star Wars figure or something. $25. Not ridiculous. I think that's a perfectly good price. I think especially a kid would love it um, for a time. But if you're a collector and you, you're enjoying the play school stuff like I've been, for 25 bucks, I think it's cool. It gets you that Red Ranger figure. So you're getting a little bit closer to completing that team, even though we'll probably never get white. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't pay the full 60 for it. I don't think it gives you enough for 60 to be honest. It's, it's a big hunk of plastic. That's what it has going for it. It looks impressive for $60, but it doesn't have enough play features to hold your interest, I don't think. Um, but like I said, fingers crossed, we hear something at Toy Fair about a possible C Series 2 for these, because there's a lot more teams they could do. I just, fingers crossed, I want to get that consistent level of uh, quality in the figures with the articulation and, and everything across the board, but 
if I had to if I had to hypothesize at this point, I would say these are probably done because the sales just probably weren't there. And it was I don't know if the stores didn't want to carry them or Hasbro wasn't getting them to the stores. I think it was more the first. I think the stores just didn't want to carry them because like I said, Imagine X, the whole style of figure I feel like is on its way out. Even Imagine X stock has greatly diminished. Not like prices, I mean in the stores, the physical stock in the stores, the amount of toys that they have in the aisle is less and less. They're getting less shelf space. In any case, I'm rambling at this point. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. My ultimate decision is if you can get them cheap, sure. Otherwise, you probably don't need it. But uh, that's going to do it for this one. Please like, share, subscribe. If you want to comment, uh, you would have to hit me up on like my Twitter or my Discord, something like that. Um, the Twitter should be in the description of the video. And then from there, you can get to my Discord. Um, but yeah, you can come chat, come say hello, tell me what you think of this thing. Otherwise, please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, thank you so much for watching.